Hi everybody, welcome to Adran's UK Live. Hi Bradley, thank you for joining me this evening. You're welcome. Um, great video to start the show with. Looks like we've just landed in our location, <laughs> isn't it? I think that's just um, dreams on behalf of the pair of us, that's isn't it really? Thinking of jetting away somewhere. Um, but yeah, a really good introduction to the evening because tonight we just wanted to talk to you and explain to you or show you how your wig is made so taking the loose hair or the loose fiber like this to putting it onto a weft and then making it into all of the beautiful wigs that all of you actually wear and you've probably wondered it's like we always wonder how do things get from a b and c till we actually get to that end product yeah. and um I know for all of our staff and people when I actually do training for all of our trade accounts, they're always quite fascinated how the wigs are actually made. And when we actually go out to the factories, I've been very fortunate to have gone out to all of our factories. But when we take other members of staff, it is the most fascinating thing to see. And I hope really all of you watching tonight will actually find it as fascinating as we actually do but also learn a little bit of something mm. about how your wig's made how did it get to that and by understanding a little bit more about how it's made and a little bit more about the industry and Adarams is a company you might actually help you make those different decisions into what wig you might like to actually wear next or the next one you want to actually purchase well, this is it Jane I mean, have you ever seen that show how it's made yes so, yeah <laughs> really hoping that we can do that some justice tonight because they actually did an episode on how wigs are made oh did they miss that one rubbish it was really really not the, the best thing i've ever seen no they didn't have us on there they didn't have us on there but i've seen other ones that i'm in love with like how they make flip-flops which sounds really strange but fascinating i think i've seen one how they actually make crisp yeah <laughs> the amount of potatoes yeah is just incredible we see we yeah. had a lot of that when i was young and we had pippin come outside you know <laughs> i showed you didn't did, I? the yeah. lady with the spotted plane that would fly off she'd say right pippin, we're gonna go and see where apples come from and then she'd get in this plane and miraculously fly off <laughs> to anywhere. an orchard yeah to an orchard <laughs> but it was a nice one a nice you know? orchard yeah nice one in somerset that's it that's it yeah so hopefully today we can give people more of an idea of where the product comes from as well because i think that's something that people are really interested in you kind of like to know the ethics you know that side of things as well everything's above board where it comes from how far it's traveled people are concerned with like footprint they leave mm. and everything really yeah so i guess it's kind of interesting to know not only where the hair comes from but where something's made who makes it all that kind of yeah thing. how it's made how it's made yeah and how you know it <laughs> can go from something so simple as just a bundle of fibre yeah. to actually turn into kind of any of the wigs that you can actually see behind us this evening, really, exactly. or the ones that you're actually wearing as well. Yeah. So it, it is quite, process, it's quite fascinating to actually see it and to actually watch it being done. I think, you know, when I'm as lucky as I have been to actually travel to our factories in Thailand to actually see it firsthand, it really does make it quite exciting then yeah. when you're actually seeing the wigs. But it actually makes it a lot easier as well, Bradley, for me to explain the whole process to somebody else, yeah. how it's actually done. And when I have been out to the factories, I do actually work when I'm there mm. because they do try to get me to work on every section so I can learn how to do it. And they are so skilled and so amazing at their job. Yeah. I think they find it quite funny because I'm kind of all fingers and thumbs <laughs> and it takes me ages to do what they can actually do in seconds, really. Well, um, highly skilled and very, very practiced. But, yeah. Well, another thing you do when you're out there is take a lot of pictures. So we've I... actually we've got a bit of a Jane travel diary <laughs> to share with you all tonight as well. Yeah, so... One of my photo albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, holiday snaps holiday of Jane. Holiday snaps of Jane. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, we'll get that up 
about some of these green while we talk about these. Yeah, because yeah, I, I think it's, it's green, 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 Adrams is a company they started in 1968. So they've actually been a company now for the last 53 years. And they own most everything to do with hair replacement throughout America, Europe, Asia. So they're a very big company. They also do a huge amount of research and development into new products. So, so I can't, I can't tell, tell you what we've got coming out, but we do, do have some really interesting new products, products that, that we, we will be coming out, out at some, some point, point in the actual future. future. And that's all I'm going to actually say on that. So we're always looking to see how we can develop new things, how we can actually move forward as well. And it's a very fast-paced industry that we actually work in and things change constantly all the time. In 1992, then, Adrans actually established Adrans Europe, and Trenco was bought in 2002, and that was 19 years ago now, which seems amazing to think that now we've been part of the Adrans group in their family for 19 years. Um, I can remember the day we actually sold the company, and it just seems like yesterday, really. And we then become part of our Adrans group in Europe, so we spend a lot of time with our European sister companies talking about wigs and developing new things with them as well. But the wigs that we're going to look at tonight and how they're actually made is all of the ready-to-wear synthetic wigs, so like your Norico's, High Fashion, Sento, Lotus, mm -hmm. um, Norico, and more, and they all come out of these particular factories in Thailand. We've got factories throughout um, Asia, we've got factories in the Philippines, in Laos, but the two main factories that we actually use as a company um, for our synthetic wigs are in Thailand. Thailand is such a beautiful country and I'm sure lots of people watching this evening have actually been to Thailand, I spent many months there, I expect a lot of people would have travelled through Thailand, other uh, people would have just popped in for a holiday. Um, we've got two different factories there. One of the factories is in Ayatua, which is part of a World Heritage Site. Oh, so it is beautiful, Bradley. When you go, you actually see the elephants walking along the oh, road. Wow. And it's like every corner you actually turn around, you see another temple. And that's absolutely beautiful. And you'll see that there's a picture of a temple on the screen that you guys are going to be able to see. And that's because within our factory, um, we've got another factory in Buraram, which is more of northern um, Thailand. It's on the Cambodian borders, that kind mm -hmm. of area. Very, very interesting place to actually go. And the people are just beautiful. They call it like the people of smiles or the world of smiles. And all they do is just beam and smile at you all day oh. long. Um, so friendly and so welcoming. Absolutely lovely. And in our factory in Bureau Ram, we've got 836 people who work in the factory. From managers going down to the canteen staff and the actual cleaners. It's really, really clean. They've got their own canteen where they can have all their meals prepared for them. And the Thai food that is actually prepared, again, is stunning. Um, when I'm there, I actually eat with the workers and it's a treat to actually eat with them, <laughs> really, because the food is, if you like Thai food, it is out of this world, yeah. um, which is really, really nice. And so the 836 in the factory, but then we have over 3,000 outsourced workers and we have over 245 outsourced production plants and by that we mean that we occasionally and sometimes within temples hire space from the actual monks in the temples to actually set up workshops. And that's one of the workshops, again, that you can see on that particular image. And it's great because it means people can actually travel to work 
within the locality of where they actually yeah, live. Um, because otherwise, a lot of people, there's not a lot of work there. It's a lot of farming work. It's quite menial work. And a lot of them, the younger girls, might end up having to go into Bangkok, go to the, like, the seedy side of Thailand that we all know, right. really. So by having these... Um, production plants we can actually keep a lot of family groups together yeah and also when i've been to visit the factory we quite often have seen a daughter a mother and a grandmother maybe all working in that factory together which is lovely so we're keeping all those family groups together that as is well really nice. and it does look really pleasant I mean, it's the idea of working in the temple as well just imagine uh, that as an experience it's, it's lovely yeah, because, you know, they can, they're quite religious people as well, so they can actually take that time to pray when they yeah. actually want to. And also in the factories as well, they've got that time to set aside to actually pray on a morning. They all do it as a group together. And it's just really nice atmosphere. Yeah. A lovely, lovely place to actually work in, which is, I think, really important when you know something's being made because you see a lot of bad press, don't you, Bradley, about underage workers, you know, in India, underage workers working in factories, you know, making clothes, which, you know, they might get paid £3 a day for and we're probably paying £500 for something. Um, and I would say, and to assure all of you, we have nobody underage employed in any of our factories at all. Um, we're very, very strict about that, mm. and it just doesn't happen. And again, I think that's quite reassuring for people to actually yeah. know that they are going to be buying something that is actually made properly, but it's not being made by youngsters who well, shouldn't so, be working. I mean, you kind of want someone that's got enough experience in, in what they're doing and has been doing it for a while mm -hmm. to be doing something like this because it's such intricate work especially when it comes to any hand tying that's done absolutely just, you know running things through i'm i'm learning this all tonight but i'm assuming a machine wafting requires some kind of sewing machine it does need to sew a and machine so, it's know, several sewing machines i'm not going to profess to be able to use that you know, <laughs> my mum kind of showed me how to do it when i went home and i, I then tried <laughs> <laughs> I think I got something really knotted up, but oh, really? you know, <laughs> you know how to do it. It's you're running something through. Yeah. But the intricacy of. The I think time. yeah is if any of you kind of I know there's a lot of people out there tonight that you probably do make your own clothes. Maybe you know you do a little bit of sewing, your curtains and different things. That's a completely different. You know, you can do that. You run the material mm -hmm. through, and it's quite easy to actually do that. Where it is fairly easy. But if you imagine you've got loose fibre like this, so every hair is loose. Yeah. And you've got to take those loose hairs to actually attach it to a piece of weft like that That's without crazy. getting any gaps along that piece of weft. That's where the actual skill comes into it. And that is quite a skill for people to actually make that machine weft in. Yeah, it just takes precision, doesn't it? A steady patience, hand. Which I have neither of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you need a lot of patience and a really, really steady hand in yeah. good eye, really. Um, but we've got a little video later on, haven't we, which shows we you have, yeah. how that machine wefting is actually done. So stay with us, keep <laughs> tuned. Yeah, don't go anywhere, and we'll actually show you that a little bit later in the programme. And when we're looking at wigs, all of our wigs, and talk about sewing, and this is kind of the same kind of thing as well, Bradley. If you were making trousers, a skirt, or curtains, you're going to have a pattern to work by. Mm. You buy a pattern, you cut out the material, stitch all, you know, pin it together, tack it together, and then sew it. With your wigs, exactly the same. Um, you might be able to see it on the actual screen if not i'm going to hold it up because that might be a little bit clearer not so sure actually it's probably clearer on your screen but every wig is actually made to its own pattern so this is the pattern of one particular wig and you've got the top area you've got the back of the wig you've got the sides where you've got your tape tabs at the sides and the nape area and then all these instructions 
down the side indicate which piece of weft like this goes into what different particular area on a machine wefted wick. Somebody has to physically imagine that lay. Flat. Yeah, we actually design the whole wig. Yeah. So we actually design the style, do a drawing, make the style that we want, think about the style. And when we're thinking about styles, you've got to think about, do you want it to have quite a lot lift at the back? So you've got that root lift. Do you want that lift on the top as well? And how mm -hmm. are you going to achieve that? So some of the wefts, when they're sewn in, they're sewn in flat. Other times the weft can be actually sewn in the other way up. So you can see straight away by sewing it the other way, you're getting that lift straight away. Yeah. So we can actually twist it to actually turn the actual hair to where we actually want it to go. And this is all the different instructions through here and here telling the girls at the factory how and where to put the particular wefts. If there's any hand tying, then it will actually go to a hand tying station after we've done the machine wefted part of the actual wig. So it's pretty amazing, really, the, the level of detail that has to go into just the designing of that. It's a huge amount of detail that goes into it. And when you think, you know, how many wigs have we got in our collections? Hundreds yeah. of different styles of wig. And every wig will have that pattern to actually go by. Mm. So they've all got their unique pattern. And I think that's when when you're choosing a wig and any of um, you, any of our viewers out there tonight, if they're looking at choosing a wig or they're thinking of getting their wig cut and you might go to a salon and the salon might say, well, I can't take it that short or I don't know how it's going to behave. And it's quite often because of the way the wig's made. So it's really, and it's just like somebody with their own bio hair. If you go to the hairdressers, some people have really nice flat hair in their nape, so they can have a really nice short haircut. Other people, it sticks out at all different angles. You might have a bit at the front that sticks up and you want your fringe to come down, but it's always going to kink and go up. And that's exactly the same with a wig. You need to understand how that hair has been put into it or the fibre has been put into it to know your limitations to how far you can go when you actually cut it. Yeah. So it's not always possible to buy a long wig and then just cut it short to any style you want because it's not always going to actually the way you actually want it. It's really good because I remember one of the webinars that we've done about the custom made and you were sharing us with how you mark onto those um, the plastic caps that you create with mm -hmm. the tape so that you don't have to cut the wig because you know how long the hair is going to be on each one of these things. Like, in my mind, I think a long time ago before I started working here, I thought you just almost had a plain wig and you just cut just it. Just cut it to any... They mass cut them into the style. Any shape in any style. Yeah. yeah. I thought there must be a lot of talented stylists in a room somewhere <laughs> <laughs> just cutting them off. Yeah. I mean, once the wig has a machine wefted wig has been completed though, mm. it does go to the styling section at the factory okay. where we do have stylists um, who are actually completely trained and they do the final finishing touches. So any tweaks, making sure the parting's in the right yeah. area, the fringe is completely right. So it goes to a hand finishing station just to actually make sure there's no long ends of hair just trim them off if they're actually or and to actually put all the partings in the right places it's for still us. Still very much a very hands-on man-made item. Yeah, everything, yeah. When we talk machine wefted, there's a different section of the factory for every different section of making the cap, yeah. preparing the fibre, curling the fibre. Right. And then once we've got the fibre curled, cut to the length we want, we then need to actually attach it to a weft. Okay. And then once we've attached it to the weft, we can then actually start to attach it to the actual empty base that was made. Cool. So we've got some more of your holiday snaps here. It's some more snaps. Really, we'll pull those up and you can talk us through what let's, we've got. <laughs> let's hope they're actually quite safe snaps. There they are. I'm sure they are. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Looking at this, the top corner on, would it be the left-hand side? Well, left-hand yes. side yeah, is yeah. I'm actually looking at it. Yep. Um, you can see all the components of a cap waiting to be made. Um, 
this, and I'll just show you this one, is an empty cap that's been made waiting to have the hair attached to it. Um, so on this particular one, this is one from our Centu Premium collection. So we've got your lace front, your monofilament top, your stretch net, and then we've got the area where it's going to be machine wefted. And you can probably hear this little scrunch. And if you look closely at this material, you can see little dots all the way through it. Can you see that quite clearly? Mm, not really, but... <laughs> yeah, a bit closer? Mm, no, that's making it blurry. Oh, is it? Oh, no, hang on. I think when it's against a dark background, you can kind of see it. Yeah, so you can see those little dots. Oh, okay. there we go. It's yeah. just focused. Sorry for the commentary there. <laughs> no, no, no. So you can see these little <laughs> dots, little perforations Yeah. is the word yeah. I was looking for, isn't it? Not dots, perforations. <laughs> and... The wigs are actually made, so we're using all those components to actually make a foundation, whether it's completely machine wefted or whether you've got elements of hand tying. And then we've got this plastic that is actually put onto the machine wefted area. Because obviously when you're actually sewing something and to actually sew in a weft of hair, you need to be able to sew it onto something. Yeah. You can't kind of just sew it onto fresh air, really. It needs to be sewn onto something. So all the wigs have this. When you receive your wig from us, though, or from whoever you actually go to buy your wigs from, what you'll find is this isn't there anymore because this will actually be removed at the factory once all the machine wefting is put onto it. Okay. But those little perforated holes that we could see is a guideline to where each piece of weft needs to be stitched and that's why when you look at the inside of a wig like this one that is machine wefted all those wefts so you've got the struts going down you've got the wefts going across all those wefts are actually very evenly spaced throughout and that's because they've got that little guide to actually follow which is quite incredible really yeah. and that's just the very start of getting your wig so that's the important part your foundation or your base um before we can start putting the actual hair onto it so that's really important and then we need to actually blend the hair but with the fiber we need to make sure it's actually really smooth it's not tangled at all and in the next picture along you can see where they're hackling the hair and what they have that's what it's called hackling yeah yeah, it's funny, yesterday me and Bradley were going through these shots and I was going, oh yeah, and you got that one and the word escaped my mind. Mm. It? So Bradley's been waiting for me to get that <laughs> What is she going to talk about today? To right yeah. So, yeah, so hackling the hair. And what they've got, they've got a board and if we've got any wig makers out there tonight, people who actually make wigs, you're going to understand this process so much better as well. And they've got a board which is about a metre in length. And then it's got nails in it, about six inches, eight inches high. They're really, really sharp, packed quite closely together. And what we do, we just drop, throw the hair over and pull it through and over. And what it does, it gets rid of any short ends, gets rid of any tangles. But it's also a way that we actually blend the colour of all the different okay. fibers as well. So all the colors in this little bunch of hair that I've got, we've got several different colors there. We've got three different tones. Those can all actually be blended together by that particular method, which is really quite good. So once we've done that, we then need to actually sew this loose hair onto a weft. And in the factory, they have three sewing machines all in a row, one at the front, one in the middle, one at the back. And then a lady or one of the guys would just feed the hair through. And as they feed the hair through, and again, you might be able to see this. It's not very easy um, to put it onto a weft, but you might be able to see there's like an inch, two and a half centimetres of a turnover of hair. So you've got like a shorter little piece of hair 
in there and you can just see it it looks slightly darker i think you can actually see it goes down to about where my actual finger is so the machine goes along flips the hair over and it all ends up on a weft like this those wefts then all need to be cut to the exact width that we actually want because when we're looking at a wig you've got obviously the nape area where it's probably 11 centimeters wide and then it's a lot wider when you go temple to temple going around the back so you'll have every weft cut to the correct width that we actually want to before it can be stitched onto the wig but some of the wigs and some of you who actually wear the Noriko wigs maybe the high fashion wigs if it's not a hand tied wig you will actually see on your wigs and it might be a question that you've actually asked yourself sometimes why does it look like that at the top of my wig why does it look a little bit fluffy um and what we actually do with wigs to give the wig the lift and the height that we actually want, we actually put what we call primities in at the root area. And it almost looks as if your hair has been back combed. So just to give it that kind of bounce in that lift. Um, when you wash it, it just keeps the shape of the wig. So it's lovely. But you need to actually be able to put the primities into the wig. And with that, little weft you can probably see it looks a little bit fluffy yeah you've got it's like there's some additional pieces at the top yeah so what it has happened is it would be like this to begin with with that little one inch return end and then we lie it down onto a hot plate really for want of a better description lie it down and i think we've got it in our little picture as well bradley the previous slide and then we put a plate on top yeah it's the last one on the actual top section on the right and then we just lay that fiber down onto the hot plate pop the top down a couple of seconds and then we get the primities put into it so just a brilliant way to actually do that so there's lots of different things that we actually have to do but when somebody's making that wefting how many meters a day do you think one person makes? That's a good question for Bradley. That's a, really That's a good, good yeah. When you think of the amount of wigs that were actually made. 200? No, 80 meters a day, one person. Oh. <laughs> I'm God. sorry, I just made you all look like you do a lot less work than I thought in my head. 80 is a lot. <laughs> 80 meters is a it huge is a amount. It's more than I could do. Yeah, so when you think you've got that trundling through a machine and somebody will actually make 80 meters of wefting wow. in a day it's a lot of when you see it it's a lot of hair yeah maybe i should actually... see go outside and see how far away 200 meters is to really <laughs> understand what i just said but well we've got some questions that come through jay moss if you can do that one of them is what's the average time scale for making the wig so going through all this process how long does it take to make a machine weft a machine wefted wig start to finish if the cap's already made, so we'll say the cap's already been produced and made because that's one department. Yeah. And once that's made, it goes to quality control. They measure it, make sure it's the right size and everything's been fine with it, no loose stitching. Mm -hmm. um, then when somebody comes into work on a morning, they literally pick up a pattern. They pick up a box of wefted hair and they pick up their empty caps. And a completely machine wefted wig could actually be made within maybe an hour and a half, two okay. hours, start to finish. It's still quite a long time. It's still it, quite a long that. time. And to train somebody um, in the factory, a new member of staff who, you know, just left school, she's going to come mm -hmm. and join us, it would take somebody about two and a half to three weeks to learn how to actually make a machine wefted wig. Wow. But what you will find is most of the people in the factory, they work on different sections. Mm -hmm. So they might be on a section where they do the hand tying. That's for people who've got a lot more skill and been there for a lot longer. You might have somebody who's doing the machine wefting, somebody doing the colouring, somebody doing the curling of the actual hair. So there's lots of different areas in the factory 
where the process actually starts yeah. till you actually get the people at the end who are actually finishing the wigs off. So I suppose then if you've got a wig that's got a machine wafting section around the back and then a hand tied bit around the top, yeah. you're going to have, you know, it, that's going to take longer. That is going to take a lot longer. Yeah. Um, machine wafted wig all over is, you know, fairly quick and really quite easy for them to do. Once you get into areas where you've got a lot of hand tying, which this one has got, you know, probably more hand tying than machine wefting in it, then that goes to a much more skilled worker to be able to do that. So the length of time to make that wig takes a lot longer. And to do the hand tying on this particular one, you're probably looking at a good 20 hours. So really. a fully hand tied wig. A fully hand tied like wig. Hours, yeah, it? if you're looking at, say, one of our gem collections, like the diamond or the amber, those <laughs> are completely hand tied and that would take 60 to 70 hours. Right. But that's by somebody who's really skilled. Yeah. So they've learned their trade and they're really fast and they're really skilled. And as you know, with whatever job we all do, it takes a lot of time to actually learn and build up our speed. To actually do these Isn't things. That's crazy that something that we just receive and would put on, somebody has spent up to 80 hours. Working. Yeah, you kind of, I think sometimes, but it's like with anything in life, we take things for granted, Absolutely. don't we? We buy it, we get the box, we pop it on, and oh yeah, it looks lovely, love the colour. But it's what work actually goes yeah. into that wig. And that's really why you get those different prices of wigs as well. Yeah. Um, because if it's all machine made, it's obviously going to be a lot cheaper than something that's got hand tie into mm -hmm. it, lace fronts, smaller filament tops as well. It's not just material, is it? You're paying for the it's time. It's the labour, the, the time. Labor, yeah. The skill set, you know, you're paying for all those things. And it is really high skill sets yeah. that they've actually got as well. Yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah, incredible it's amazing. I mean, to actually see. see. It. You know, I've never actually seen somebody making it. One day. One day. One you day. never know. Never know. Well. I do think we might have to go and do a I live think we're episode. we're going to have to do live from Thailand. Yep. I can imagine the opening sequence right now. <laughs> Cocktails in hand. <laughs> Lovely beach scenes. Temples. <laughs> elephant rides. We'd have to do that. Yep. Great. Yeah, we'd have to have a week's holiday before or a week's holiday <laughs> after Bradley. Just to get the after footage. we've done the video. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> before we actually get to the factory one That's way it. or the other, isn't That's it? it? But yeah, definitely. Um, no, it's a great thing to be able to actually see. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on in the rest of your holiday snaps down here then? <laughs> Don't know, you tell me. me. <laughs> There's some rather large <laughs> rollers there, big metal poles. What are they for? Okay, um, we've probably got a bigger one of that as well, haven't we? I think we probably do. Shall we go, is it the next one down? I think it is. Yeah, yeah that's easier. This is, okay, so wigs come in all different styles, all different kind of lengths, straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair. And if we want to have a curl put into a wig, then the actual fibre, once it's been put onto its weft, will then be actually wrapped around a perming rod. But our conventional perming rods that we actually use in hair salons that you see every day are about this width. The ones we use at the factory are probably about a metre wide. That's a perming rod. And that's a perming rod. Wow. So this is to actually do the actual curl, Bradley. Oh and God. it's, again, about a metre wide. They also have end papers that they use, but giant-sized end papers and they just comb the hair so it's really, really straight. They coat it in a... Coat it. Coat it. I won't tell you what it is, but they do coat it to perm it. And then they wind it up, and then the hair, or the rods, are then put into an oven. And they've got these big, massive ovens that all these rods actually go into with all the actual hair wound all around them. They get left in there for a certain amount of time. Once that time is up, they're then taken out and they're left on the floor to cool down completely. Because if you imagine, these are like aluminium, so they get really, really incredibly hot. hot. And at the factory, it's a job of the men in mm. the factory to actually take these rods out because they are so incredibly hot. They don't let any of the ladies actually do that job. Well, 
which I think is really nice. Very gentleman. But I mean, I like somebody opening doors for me. So it's, you know, <laughs> I'm old fashioned in that way. Yeah, it's like, yeah, quite happy. Carry a bag. <laughs> Open a door. Yes, that's lovely. Thank right, you. Rita here says so she's going to carry our bags for us. So we've got to <laughs> <laughs> oh, Right, you're going to come with us, Rita. Oh, Brilliant. She's along, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, years ago, we did actually do a trip out to the factories with um, some of our trade accounts as oh, well. Wow. Um, it was something we actually offered, so from the UK and from Europe. And there was quite a lot, probably three coach loads of us that actually went and quite a few people from the UK and they did get a tour of the factory and the opportunity to try to actually do some of these things. So yeah, so, if, so I know a lot of our um, trade accounts actually follow me and Bradley on a Wednesday night as well. So if you're listening, maybe just watch out for your emails and maybe when all this is cleared up, all the COVID and the <laughs> pandemic and we can travel again, we'll set up another little tour, coaches already. which is really good. So, yeah, so the rods are taken out, left on the floor to cool down overnight. The next day, the ladies are come in, unravel the hair, and that's when we get whatever curl we want into the so, actual fibre. For instance, Jane, there's a piece just behind you over your right shoulder. This one? The, nope. This Next one? one? Yes. So the curl that's in that, I take it that would require like a, a large rod. Just to it get would. A bend in there. Yeah, they come in all different diameters, like really, really tiny. Yeah. So we want like an afro y, really tight curl. Mm -hmm. But with this particular style, the um, Alva, you want that bend. Yeah. So it's like you've actually blow dried your hair with a really round, large mm -hmm. brush to give it that bit of oomph in the body. Yeah. So it would have gone on to one of the larger rollers and it would have probably been around about a 40 millimeter one. And that's wow. 40 millimeters in diameter. So we're probably looking at about that kind of size rod for okay. it to go so, on. Because I was just thinking, if the fibers were really straight, I mean, the woods would look kind of weird, right? They wouldn't look very natural. It doesn't look very natural because when you look at all, even somebody's own bio hair, even though you might think you've got really dead straight hair, there's always that little bit of movement to yeah. it. It's never kind of rainwater yeah. poker straight. So there's always a little bit of bend in yeah. movement to it. So all of the fibre does actually have that little bend, bit of bend in movement to it. But also on the ends of the fibre, and I think it's quite interesting when we actually look at a wig sometimes, and you can look at the end of the actual fiber and it almost looks as if it's been tethered doesn't it mm. as if it's actually been thinned out ever so slightly and the way they actually do that is is once they've got the actual fiber to how they want it they'll actually just go in again with the hackling tool and just keep going over those ends so they're breaking down the actual very end of the fiber so it's not quite so blunt and it's a lot softer yeah. on the end so again it's quite incredible what they can actually do so it, gives it, that natural look, it does it? give it that natural look yeah without being cut to actually achieve yes. that natural look which is good and um, which is well, where, where the, are we going uh, now? This coloring is, this is the coloring yeah and, and um, i mean next week we're actually talking about color aren't we, we bradley are we going to be doing this yeah <laughs> that would be fun yeah, next week we're talking all about colours, colour for the summer, isn't it? All those colour trends and understanding about colour placement on your wig. And, mm. you know, do you order a rooted one, a long rooted one? And what it all means, really, to get rid of all that mumbo jumbo, like hybrid colours and everything we talk yeah. about in our brochures. So you actually think, oh, I know what I want. I want a pastel one or a hybrid one. It's also good to know about, like, face framing with colours and what it does to your... How it changes you. Yeah. It how it can just colour is I think really quite interesting because it will if you get the right colour tone for your skin, it just lifts your face completely. Mm -hmm. If you've got the wrong colour tone, it can just really drag you down. Yeah. Also the right colour can really make your eyes pop out. If you've got blue eyes or green eyes, you can really make them kind of stand yeah. out as well. So colour is quite important. And when you buy in a wig, when you come into any of our branches or any wig boutique that you might go to, play around with colour for a little bit, that first wig you're buying. Mm. See what actually suits you and see how you actually feel comfortable. 
and see what a change it makes. Even if you just take a selfie of yourself in one wig and then take a selfie of yourself in the next wig in different colours, put them side by side and you're going to really be able to see that difference. Yeah, definitely. Ooh. And if you've got your own bio hair as well and yeah. you don't want to make that big mistake, you know, going blonde or going dark or going red because you're not sure, again, go into a salon, have like an imaging service done where you can go in, try several wigs on and actually take those pictures so you're not making that big mistake. Or instead of actually colouring your hair, preserve the quality of it and buy a wig and just have fun with wigs. You've just got so to try these things. There's well. lots of things you can do. And I think, yeah. I mean, wigs are just a huge amount of fun for people. It's a real necessity item for other people as well. And there's yeah. lots of reasons why some of you might actually wear them or thinking about actually wearing one yeah. as well for different reasons. But then also, you know, there's more that goes into it, isn't there, when it comes to colour, even if it's a necessity piece for you. Yeah. It's finding a piece that really makes you look natural best. and, and your na best. Ooh, yeah, natural, of course, but yeah. having the opportunity to try different colour placements, different highlight patterns. Maybe you want a dip dye, maybe you want an ombre, maybe you just want highlights. You know, you can try different things. Why should you miss out on trends? Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. No, mm. and and I think that's a great thing with us, isn't it, Bradley? All well with Adoran's, not just me and you, obviously. We're pretty great, but. Um, yeah. but we do try as much as we can to keep ahead of those fashion trends all the time. Yeah. We're always looking forward to what, you know, those different colours might be, what seasons are coming and mm -hmm. what colours are going to be here for like autumn and winter, maybe next spring. And we're looking ahead the whole time. And I think when you're actually thinking of trying a wig, it is explore. Have a little bit of fun with it till you find that right colour that works for you. Yeah. And you don't necessarily need to stick to one colour. No. You might be quite brave, you know. You might be quite happy to let people know that you are wearing a wig or you're wearing some sort of hair replacement. And you can have fun with colour then as well. There's no right and there's no wrong. No. I think everybody is an individual and it's how you actually want to kind of be and how open or how confident you actually feel. Mm. And again, I think if you get the right colour... It will just lift your confidence as well. Definitely. It would be really good for you. We've actually got a question about colour that's coming. Okay. That um, is about the creation of the wigs, which is quite an interesting thing, which I didn't think of. So are there different patterns for wigs that have more than one colour in them to place them, or is it all done freehand? No. Again, again it's really interesting. Because when we actually design a colour, we design the style and then we design the colour. And a lot of, when you actually look in our brochures, um, we've got a huge amount of colours, massive colour choice that you can actually choose from. And I'll just grab the colouring just here. So, you know, if you're not aware, there's a huge choice of colours. Everything from you've got your pinks, you've got blues in there, you've got all your different natural tones. There's something for everybody. But all of our styles don't all come in the same colours. Yeah. Because some styles won't suit certain colours. Mm -hmm. So we've got to look at the style to think what colour will it actually suit. So once we've got the style, then we can actually think about what colours will suit that particular wig in that particular style. And again, they've got all of their own patterns for those colours as well. So whereas we make a pattern for where the wefting is going that actually includes all the details for the color for where that color placement is going to actually be as well in each of the different wigs because the color the fiber is actually colored to begin with we put in the long rooted colors we put in the short rooted colors if we've got more rooted colors and then we've got to think about where is that color placement going to go if it's machine wefted, it's all going to be down on that pattern. If it's hand tied, what you will actually find is on a hand tied wig, the colour placement might be slightly different on two wigs exactly the same. You'd expect be that. You know. Which um, I always think you would expect it. And I always tend to actually liken it to, you know, if you were asking somebody to do a painting, 
Yeah. Like, for example, Monet, who done the um, water lilies. Mm. If you asked him to actually replicate that, you're never going to get the same brush yeah. strokes, the same shades or anything else. And that's exactly the same. So a lot of it is interpretation when you've got the hand tying. They do have a pattern to follow, but it could be, you know, just by getting one or two hairs less, it's going to look slightly different, mm -hmm. but it's almost spot on every yeah. time. Yeah, that's it's really, amazing. it's quite, fa I think the colour inside of it is really quite fascinating and how we go about designing those colours as well. Um, I've been doing some colour work on some new wigs that would be coming out probably next year now because of COVID, we've had a slight delay. And I'll ask the factory to do something for me. And it's like, I want a blend of this 50-50 blend, different blends of colours, or I want a rooted colour, and or I want the actual roots to be two centimetres in length, then four centimetres in length, so I can yeah. alternate the actual length of the root. And I then actually do it in drawing. So I do a, a drawing like this, a side of the head, a top of the head, do lots of different diagrams on it, the sizes of the spotlights I want. And that's the way we actually start working in actually making the colours. But yes, yeah, really quite a fascinating way to do it. We've had a question about those guides actually. Where can I purchase the weft guide and template? Is that something that you have to create yourself for each week? Because they must be unique, mustn't they? Everyone is actually unique, yeah. yeah. Um, it's not really something we certainly wouldn't have it. Yeah, well. I mean, we, all of these patterns are actually kind of unique to each of the wigs in yeah. all of our collections. Also, if you're thinking about, you know, if you're having a bespoke wig made or a custom made wig made, then those are actually designed or the colours are designed by the person you actually see within the salon. Um, we don't, it's something we don't sell by selling the foundations or selling the actual patterns for the actual wigs because they are all actually patented for our actual company. Yeah. And also, really. with everyone's different, there's not really a right thing to, there's no base, there's, there's no original base to supply. No. Unique. There's, I mean, there's so much choice. Oh, exactly. It's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of them, yeah. really. It would be quite a difficult thing to do, but, you know, if you're thinking that you want to actually have something designed specifically for you as a person to actually wear, then you can actually go to into any of our branches mm. to actually start that process to get something unique and have it made to your particular colour and style um, and foundation as well. But that's when really you're looking at that bespoke custom made service rather than buying a wig that's already actually been made and you yeah. can just go in and take one away with you on the same day. For anyone watching that is interested in custom made, you can actually find all of our previous webinars on our YouTube channel. So we have a whole one on there about custom made, don't we? we only a while ago, a few weeks back now. I think. Yeah. But yeah, very interesting. So definitely check that out. Mm. So Jane, the colouring that's going on in, in these pictures, am I right in thinking that to dye a fibre, they have to put it in some kind of plastic solution dye. Yeah, it's... um must be quite a different way than you would dye, say, cotton. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not a hair dye that no. we actually use, that you would use on our own bio hair. It's like a textile dye that's actually oh, used yes, to actually dye the actual yeah. fibres. And we actually start off with the base colours. Mm -hmm. So you've got, like, hundreds of, you know, different base colours. And then from the base colours, we can actually blend and mix the fibres to get to the shades that we actually want. But if we wanted, for instance, to say have more of an ombre, let's say we've got like lighter tips to it, or if we actually wanted a long rooted colour, we actually get to our lightest colour on the ends first, mm -hmm. what we actually want to achieve. And then if we wanted that root area to be darker, we would cover all the ends up and then with that root area if it was going to be say two centimeters four centimeters six whichever length we would then actually tie that onto a metal kind of rod and they are then dipped in 
to the actual colour in solution. And the machine just kind of wiggles around a bit, it kind of shivers, right. so the actual dye is actually moving around and being agitated all the time till we actually get the right colour and the right depth. When that happens, it then all goes to another section where all the hair or all the fibre is actually washed, so we can actually get rid of the actual dye. So is it like a hot solution? It's not, it's a cold solution. It's cold? Yeah. That's interesting. I'm yeah, just so thinking of trying to dye, try to dye some like polyester. Yeah. And it, it's always doing it on the hob with like boiling. Boiling water, boiling yeah. No, it's, yeah, no, it's a cold solution wow. that they actually put it into. But yeah, any colour is achievable in, I mean, lately, I, I think for the last year, the last 18 months, two years, we've be, been seeing a lot of pastel colours. And we've been seeing a lot of hybrid colours and that those lovely different blues and pinks and those rooted colours come in through. And it's just as the technology in the factory moves on, yeah. that we're able to actually create new different things okay. all the time. And there, we're always experimenting because we're always asking as companies, you know, Adrams in the UK, then we've got Adrams in Europe. Every country is always asking the factory, can you do this? Can you do that? And trying to actually move everything forward yeah. all the time. So it's quite a fascinating one. So, yeah, uh, this is um, what we were talking about earlier. So this is the wax yep. being created through the machine once the, the actual colouring has been done. Isn't it? That's it. So you colour, well, you prepare your fibre, mm -hmm. you colour, prepare your fibre, you permit. And then, before it's permed, sorry, we need to go from that to this. And as you can see in the um, picture on the top right, left-hand side, you can see the three machines all in a row. And that's where they actually just thread all the actual fibre through. So it actually comes off like this. Once we've got the fibre like that, and it's like, like you know, yards of metres and metres of yeah. it, it does go to a quality control. So they cut it to each width that we want. And then somebody would look at each piece to make sure that this fibre is completely even all the way along. So we don't want clumps of it together and we don't want any gaps either. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be completely even all the way along. If it's not, it just gets ditched. Right. And we don't use it and then, you know, goes back to actually make some more. Yeah. Um, but they are very skilled at how they actually do it. And they actually do it really quite fast as they thread it through the actual machine. So once we've got that, then we might actually put the primities on, but Bradley's going to actually show you now the, the video. video. Done, so. And it's quite fascinating, isn't it? Maybe we'll play it twice because it goes quite quickly. Yeah, so it's going through multiple... Yep, so you machines. go through three machines that they're threading it through. Another guy, another round. Yep, so start at the beginning, the loose fibre is being picked up on that first one, twisting it over, taking it through, and the end of the actual weft. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? It's clever, isn't it? Yeah. Very clever. I must say there was a few gaps in mine when I did <laughs> Not many, but there was a few, yeah. That's really amazing. Though. It's really that. good. But, and, you know, these people, they are really skilled. They just do it really, really quickly. When they're doing it, it's just like, yeah, just thread it through, and it's like done another lot, another <laughs> box taken away. Though. It almost looks like it is a fully machine done, like a robot's doing it, because yeah. it's so seamless. Yeah, it is very, very good. And then, of course, once we've done the machine wefting part and all the machine wefting is actually sewn on by machine, and you can see this on the bottom right-hand side where they're actually sewing the wefts onto the actual foundation. Once all the machine wefting has been done, then it might go to another department to actually have the hand tying done. So if any of the wigs that you actually buy, they've got a lace front to it, they might have a monofilament top, that's going to be all hand tied. This area of stretch net through here, that's all hand tied. 
So that's going to be a much more skilled worker who will actually be doing that for us. And you've got reasons why you might want to have um, a wig with a lace front and you might have a reason why you don't want one. And you're probably asking yourself, you know, what is the advantages? Why would I choose a different type of foundation? And what am I looking at when I come into one of the, your branches or going into an independent wig shop? Or if you're buying one through the internet, what are you actually looking at? I think the crucial thing is you need to actually think about what style you actually want to go for. If you want to wear your hair in a full fringe, then it's probably your choice out there. You could go for any wig with it in a full fringe. But if you were, say, to go for a wig that was machine wefted all over, and this one's com completely machine wefted, and as you can see, we've got that little bit of a fringe to it. And machine wefted wigs do tend to come with that fringe as well. And the reason for that is because you get this almost a hard line. Right. So if you were to take your hair back, say you wanted to put, you know, some hair accessories into it, a headband or something, you're going to, going to actually see that telltale line that maybe is actually a wig. So if you want to take your hair back, I would always look at going for something that's got a lace front to it. And if I just pop this one on the head, and you can actually see straight away, if we've got a lace front, it's, softer, it? it's a lot softer. It sits on the forehead really lovely. And you can actually take it away and play around with it. And it just looks like our own hair is actually growing from the scalp. Yeah. So really think about what kind of style you want or what you want to do with your hair. Because um, this is your hair, obviously. So think about what you want to do. Some of the actual wigs with lace fronts have lace coming down the sides as well, like this particular one. So you can actually take all of that hair back, which enables you to actually put it up and do a lot of different things with it as well. So think really about the style you want before you actually choose what kind of base you're looking at. Or if you're on the internet and you go through our brochures and you're thinking, why do I want a lace parting or a lace front? Or what is a machine wefted wig and what are the differences? That's really your biggest difference. Also, when you've got a wig that's got hand tying to it, you will find it sits a lot flatter yeah. to your actual head. So it's all going to actually sit a lot flatter and just hug the actual shape and contour of your actual head as well. So again, you're getting a much more natural look. If you're somebody though, who likes to have quite big hair and to have quite a lot of hair, again, go for something that's machine wefted all over. And then you're getting all that body and lift that you yeah, actually you really want naturally do, as well. Really and really you, with the oh, yeah. And when you wash it, it just goes back to that yeah. shape again. So they're very, very easy to look after. So definitely think about what kind of style you want to do, how you want to play around with them. And that's, you know, will help you choose the right foundation yeah. for your wig. It just gives you a little bit of help really yeah and there's so many different ones out there it can get really confusing um on previous evenings we've talked about all the different foundations haven't we and again they're all there on youtube and also on our website that you can actually watch those about different foundations if it's going to give you a little bit of a help to actually find out which is the best yeah. base for you um you can't say that there's any right or wrong basis. No. Um, I think it just depends on you as an individual and what style you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to achieve personally when you're actually playing with your wigs as well. That's it. And this is, um, <clears throat> Bradley's been finding this little video quite fascinating. We've got two videos now and they're quite mesmerizing really. And this is showing you really the skill and the attention 
to actually hand tie the fibre into one of these bases of the wigs. And it's quite incredible to actually watch. It's quite hypnotising, Jane, because it, it's just so... <laughs> It's repetitive, but in a nice way. In a nice way. Comforting. Yeah, they all work to a pattern. So yeah. it's not just randomly put in the actual hair. It's all working to a complete pattern as well. And you can see the pattern on the underneath through the um, actual foundation. Yes. So they work to a complete pattern whilst they're actually tying these individual hairs or two hairs at a time into the actual base. So how many hairs roughly is there on a wig? Do you reckon? Well, if it's a completely hand-tied yeah. wig, um, again, maybe looking at our um, gem, yeah. say looking at the diamond or the amber, you're actually looking at around about 100,000 hairs. Wow, so doing that. 100, 100 to 120,000 hairs on a wig. Yeah, it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. And the materials that they're knotting them into are very, very fine. So you do really need to be really, really skilled to actually, if you imagine trying to get little your needle or your hook through this material yeah. without damaging it to actually put your hair through. It does have to be quite gentle, even though it yes. kind of looks like, well, I guess they are being gentle. I was going to say, they just look like they know what they're doing. They're so confident. They're just in doing They're it. very, very good. But it's getting the tension right as well, Bradley. That's it. Yeah. Because when you're actually doing this knotting, if you actually knot it too tightly, it can actually split and damage the base. The fibre can also snap as well. If you don't tie it tight enough, then the hair is going to come straight out as well. So it's getting it to that right tension yeah. all the time. So it's a lot of practice and a lot of skill. And I think anybody who has that skill and can actually do that work is, I think is quite amazing, really. Absolutely. It's really very good. Well, we saw in the video at the very start of tonight, there were what looked like glowing balloons and people were hand pulling the hands through base which we've got a video of oh the, the next engine. video yeah and that's yeah, when that? that's actually where you've actually got what we call a french drawn top okay. so the hair is encased within different layers of material uh -huh. so the hair is underneath and you actually pull it out through and it means you don't get any what we call a return end with an actual wig so it's like they're just hooking that hair out and that's in this next video, isn't it? I think that you've got Bradley for us. And this is it. So they're working with daylight lamps underneath them. Because I couldn't think what you meant by glow under. I was thinking glowing balloons and glows. Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. If I was looking puzzled, I was thinking. But it kind of does look like that. Yeah, it's actually, they've got a daylight lamp underneath the foundation. So they can actually see it's really clear in light for them. And then they've got their hook that they just put in and just pull a hair through and pull that hair through. Wow. And that's, again, very skilled work as well because you don't want to actually damage that base no. when you're actually pulling that hair through. And those hooks can be very, very sharp as well. Imagine. So quite amazing, really. Again, very relaxing. <laughs> yeah, you're going to take that one home to bed tonight That's then. It. Just yeah, sit and watch that on like replay. Therapy. It is quite amazing, isn't it, really? It really I think is. the whole, I mean, for me, I love everything to do with wigs and how they're made in this whole complex kind of thing that they actually go through. And I just think it's wonderful. And to actually share that with all of you so you hopefully might get a better understanding of what you're wearing, where it actually came from, and maybe just think about, do I need to change my wig? Do I need to maybe try something else as yeah. well, isn't it, really? Also to just wear it with confidence, knowing that yeah. you know, a lot of love went into making that. Huge amount <laughs> so of love goes into A lot into, of time. Yeah, and I would say... When Bradley said that a lot of love goes into it, I would say everybody who works in the factory just 
so lovely. Yeah, really welcoming and just really nice people. Yeah. Ladies and men, just really love. I'm very, very happy. I was going to say they all well. look very smiley. Oh, the girls they're... are all look like they're in groups of friends and stuff. Yeah. It's really quite a nice environment to be in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I yeah. do love the idea of working with Tampa as well. Yeah, that is really That's nice. Quite an experience. Really nice to actually be able to go and see that kind of level of work yeah. that is being done. It's very peaceful. Very well. peaceful. But the fact was very peaceful as well. Because there's no loud music on. Mm -hmm. It is all just very, very quiet. And um, because of the nature of the work as well, at every workstation, they're only allowed to have a bottle of water. Okay. Um, they don't have their sweets and they don't have their packet of crisps. You yeah. know, you go into anybody, any normal office, you've got, you know. Pack of hobnobs on the side. Yeah, there you go. Your chocolate biscuits or something, <laughs> isn't it, next door to your PC. Um, they only eat in the canteen away from their desk because of the nature of the work they're doing. So it's all very clean. Um, with the colour in section, they all work under daylight conditions as well. So they've got all these daylight lamps everywhere. So it's really bright and fresh in there as well. Um, they need to do that to preserve their eyesight, really. Well, yeah. And I, I would say one of the most incredible things is really is um, they don't wear glasses. Really? Yeah. And you would think the level of work that they're doing and how close up it is, especially when they're doing the hand tying all the time, never really ever see any of them with a pair of glasses on. Which I find quite incredible, really. Good, yeah, absolutely incredible. But yeah, oh, yeah. Well, interesting. It's really interesting. I hope it's really shown people the other side that I don't think you see very often. I actually, before we did this tonight, had a look on YouTube to see if I could find any videos of how wigs are made. And it was all the same kind of thing over and over again. Yeah. One person making one very particular piece in a very old-fashioned way, yep. traditional, you know, you, you don't understand how the fibres are made, mm. what goes into making the style. All I, this, the well, I think, you know, a lot of factories do keep it very secret mm. because they don't want their trade secrets to actually get out for somebody else to actually copy it. Yeah. I mean, that's why, I mean, myself this evening, I was very careful not to mention any particular names of <laughs> products that we actually use to actually do certain things because I'm not allowed to actually do that. And, you know, footage of the factory as well, it's very only very, very short clips as well, whatever we take in the photographs as well because it's a very private thing. You don't want to be giving away all your trade secrets really, Bradley. Yeah. But saying that, I think what we've managed to kind of give you this evening is a real insight to where your wig came from and how it actually got to us in the UK as mm. well. Because when they've been made, they get made in Thailand and at the very end of the procedure, they actually go to the hand finishing department. Then they get packaged. So they're all wrapped in the nets, all in the tissue paper, put into the beautiful boxes that they actually come to you in. And those wigs then are actually flown from Thailand to LA, so over to the States. And then every week we actually import all the wigs that we actually need into the actual UK. Um, and then go out to every individual who needs or wants to actually wear a wig. Okay. So, yeah, it's amazing. Quite some yeah. journey, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we've had some nice, lovely comments we have had tonight. Some comments. One question yeah. before we finish. I must tonight. say, it's, hi, Lynn. Thank you for watching this evening. A little shout out for Lynn. Thank you. We've got quite a few regular viewers in tonight, which is lovely. It's lovely. We have one final question before we say goodnight, and that is what is the hair attached to when it's being pulled through? And that would be from the French drawn top. So is it attached to another layer underneath? It's got three layers of material, okay. basically. Yeah. Um, Find the French draw on top. Yeah, one second. Go. I'll be one, two, three seconds. So I'm assuming then that you've got the layer on the top that's been pulled through. Yeah. 
a layer in the middle that it's perhaps attached to and then a layer underneath to stop yeah. you from So that. if you've got something that's got a French drawn top, if you look at this, you can actually see it almost looks as if the hair is coming from the scalp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Quite clearly. And when you've got a French drawn top, it means that the hair you've actually got is just one length of hair. You don't have a shorter. You've got to move it down a little. Oh, sorry. There you don't go. have a shorter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's because I'm looking at you talking. I wasn't <laughs> concentrating. You don't have a shorter end. So it keeps it one length of hair. It also keeps it really, really flat. So it just sits very snugly over the top of the head. And on the under section, what it looks like is you've got another layer of silk. Sometimes it's lace, depending on the actual make. And all the knots are encased in that area. Right. So the hair would have been underneath here and then hooked through like this to get our French drawn top. Again, to do French drawn tops, the level of skill for somebody is even higher than somebody who does hand tying. Wow. So it's a ne ne another skill level again. And you'll find if you're buying or looking at any wigs, if it's a bespoke, custom made, maybe a stock piece in human hair, you will actually find that anything with a French drawn top is going to actually be at the higher end of the market. It's going to be a lot more expensive than something that is actually machine made as well. But the actual look that you actually get looks completely natural. Yeah. Yeah. It's Again, fabulous. You're, you're paying for the, the craft the expertise, the time. Absolutely. You know, the yeah. Is, yeah. I think it's very fascinating. Well, thank you so much, Jane. No, it's because, been. You know, I've not been. I've not even been to that part of the world, but I've not been have to... Have you not? No, I have never. Oh, um, you surprised me. I know. Globe trotter over here, but not gone that far. Yeah. But I've not seen, obviously, the factories for that reason. Mm. Um, it's been great to get an insight into how it goes firsthand from someone who's been. It is fascinating. Yeah. And I must say, for me, every time I go, I learn so much as well from them. Um, that's kind of my school where I go to yeah. really and learn so many new things and yeah your excitement is like yeah I'm like a little girl in a little <laughs> in a sweet shop really when I go to the factories is amazing and I think all of us who do similar jobs to me in the company we're all it, we all get very excited yeah when we go and we all normally go together so it's a little gaggle of girls who do get very mm -hmm. excited when we're there Love which that. is lovely yeah Aww. Yeah, That's really cool. all my other colleagues in Europe. Yeah, we have fun. Good. Yeah, it's well, good. I, but, think, yeah. I think that's pretty much it tonight. Yeah, we've had some lovely comments, lovely which, comments. do you know, that, that always means so much to us, isn't it, it really? It um, it's great that you all take that time to actually watch us. I must say, though, the weather's turned in, so you're probably quite happy to be <laughs> sat in tonight watching us instead of outside. Yeah. Um, definitely here, it's absolutely pouring down it with is. rain. It's a bit idiotic in the, the whole beach uh, <laughs> thing now. Yeah, yeah Bradley's dressed with the summer. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, the rain is absolutely pouring down, isn't it, really? It's not very nice at all. So thank you for taking your time sitting and watching us this evening it's been lovely to have all of you with us and as we said next week we're talking all about color yeah be so color one. yeah color placement you know all the different wigs the different choices that you've got and taking out that kind of mystery about what all the different colors actually yeah. mean as well because i think when we're talking pastels and hybrids and rooted it's when you're a hairdresser, you kind of understand these things. But I think for everyday wearers, it's, it's going to take that mystery out of it for you. It so I think next week's going to be a really exciting one as well. It will be. I look yep. forward to it. So yes. 8 p.m., same time, same place. Same time, same place for we'll everybody. Be here. And until yep. then, enjoy the rest of your week. Yeah, have a fun week. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.